The genius in the White House, President Trump, did what he promised to do, which was to indicate that the United States would withdraw from the Paris Accord on Climate Change, thereby reaffirming his imbecilic denialism about climate change. Actually, the country which is most involved in fossil fuels and therefore the discharge of carbon is China. And China has said it won't reduce its dependence on coal until 2030. The United States is second in line. Between the two of them, you could probably say, well, there goes the planet. And certainly, the 11,000 scientists, you may recall, who issued their very, very strong emergency letter about climate change the day after the Trumpian announcement, they used the phrase, untold human suffering in prospect if we didn't respond on an emergency basis to what was happening. And you know, when you look at the convulsive weather platter, patterns from, from rain and, and uh, terrible floods on the one hand through to heat and drought and, uh, and famine on the other, you can see how countries would be so terribly vulnerable to the consequences, particularly in the developing world. You know, I was looking at some countries in Central and West Africa and, and they're entirely dependent on farming, on agriculture. And in a country like Burkina Faso, a West African country with 20 million people, a third of the land is gone. It's gone because of excessive and overriding drought and, and overuse of the land as people desperately try to get things to grow. And as a consequence of losing a third of the land, there are hundreds of thousands of refugees who have migrated to adjacent countries. We now call them climate refugees but around the little parcels of land that are left for household cultivation, there's now fighting and violence, physical violence, even sexual violence. And that's complicated further by the existence of the Islamic Jihad, which just last week killed 38 miners and wounded 60 others on their way to the mine. It's just awful. In fact, the country just north of Burkina Faso, Mali, has a president who said last week, that the very existence of his country was at risk when you look at all of the factors brought together. So you see, it's, it's really calamitous for these Francophone West African countries. And it's not just the loss of the agricultural capacity, it's the assault on global public health. When you're impoverished, when you have lost your income, when you're struggling to survive, when the health systems are breaking down, when you go to the health clinic and the antiretroviral drugs aren't there and the doctors and nurses aren't there. Why do I say antiretroviral drugs? Because there are five million people in Central and West Africa living with HIV and there are 760 new infections every day. And think of the consequences. So what gives hope to the 11,000 scientists? Well, they say there are two things. One is the move to renewable energy, wind and solar in particular, and the other is the mass international youth movement led by Greta Thunberg, and they hope that that will press the politicians to change their policies, for example, on agriculture. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.